Welcome to the Middle Tech Podcast, this region's leading business podcast, shining a light on technology, entrepreneurship, and the future of business in Kentucky and beyond. Our goal is to advance the ecosystem by bringing attention to the founders, change makers, innovators, and those supporting them. Middle Tech's content can be found on your favorite podcast streaming app, social channels, and YouTube. We encourage you to follow and participate in the conversation. Let's discuss and build the future. Welcome back to the Middle Tech Podcast. You've got Logan Jones and Evan Knowles here, and we just sat down with the founders of Holler Creative. So Holler Creative is based out of Corbin, Kentucky. Uh, They are a digital marketing agency, and they're doing a lot of good work to kind of redefine the way that people think of Eastern Kentucky and Appalachia. So, you know, when you, uh, when a lot of people outside of the area think of Eastern Kentucky, it's a lot of negative stereotypes, cold. negative stigmas. Yeah. Cold, dirty energy, uneducated people. I mean, like the list unhealthy goes on. eating, unhealthy obesity. Yeah. It's, it's not good when you bring someone that's not from the region and ask them to talk about it. It's usually not good things. Uh, the people who are from Eastern Kentucky, we know all the great things. Uh, that this area has to offer the beautiful uh, nature and the beautiful scenery. The people are incredible around here. Everyone wants to help somebody out. Uh, and the, and the, grit, ta- the grit with the people. The grit, the grit. Yeah, the towns. Uh, there's just a lot of a lot of awesome stuff going on in Eastern Kentucky. And what Holler Creative is doing uh, is using their their digital marketing skills to paint a new picture of Eastern Kentucky and Appalachia. So it was a lot of fun for us to sit down and just kind of riff on what we love, which is Eastern Kentucky and this area that we're from. Um, so we sat down with their founders, uh, discussed the way that they see Eastern Kentucky and what they're doing to shed light on the region's best story and, and essentially try to bring more tourism to Kentucky, which is something we also talked with, talked about with uh, Colby Hall of SOAR. Yep. So we discussed what the Holler Creative is, their new initiative, Explore Appalachia, which is um, shedding a light on all those great tourist attractions. They're doing that in partnership with uh, L8 and SOAR. Uh, We talked about the challenges the region faces, uh, the great things about the region, of course, uh, then the future of the region. So there's a great future ahead uh, in Eastern Kentucky with things like App Harvest, with uh, Eland Ventures and Eland Renewables. There's a lot of great things going on, land betterment. Uh, There's just a lot of people putting a lot of great work into that region that really needs it. Uh, And the people are really receptive of it and working hard to make, uh, you know, a a great future. Yeah. So we're excited to uh, tell you guys more about it during this interview. And uh, let you guys listen to this and learn more about what Holler Creative does. But before we dive into that, as always, we just want to give a quick shout out to our sponsors. Uh, so as Evan just mentioned there, something awesome that's going on in this region is uh, land betterment. And as you guys know, land betterment is taking these abandoned strip mines and putting sustainable business business solutions in their place and providing jobs to the communities that lost those jobs when the, the mine shut down. Uh, so they're doing some awesome work around Eastern Kentucky and Appalachia, and we're very grateful for their sponsorship. You can learn more about them by listening to our interview with them on episode 97, or you can go to their website, landbetterment.com. And if you're starting a company, you probably need an attorney, somebody to take care of your legal documents, incorporation documents, shareholder agreements, operating agreements, whatever it might be. You're probably going to need some help with that, and you should reach out to Brandon Johnson. So I've worked with Brandon Johnson. He's fun to work with. He's from Kentucky. Uh, he's worked with Louisville Slugger, uh, Papa John's, lots of great startups in the region like uh, WeatherCheck, a lot of influencers. So he knows what he's doing. He loves working with Kentucky small businesses, uh, and he's fun to work with. So I encourage you to reach out to him. And if you want to learn more, you can go to middletechpod.com slash Johnson Law. All right, let's dive on into it. Hope you guys enjoy. All right, guys, welcome back. Uh, we are here at the Awesome Inc. studio, and we are sitting down with the co-founders of The Holler Creative, Josh Kopik and Kevin Flora. So thank you guys both for joining us. We're excited to dive into this conversation and talk a little bit about Appalachia and what you guys are, are doing in that area. So uh, how are you guys doing this evening? Doing great, man. Uh, I appreciate you guys having us on. I um, mean, anytime, anytime we uh, get a chance to, to kind of tell our story, our side of things, you know, we're going to take, take somebody up on that offer. So um, we were definitely appreciative of you guys having us on. Absolutely. For sure. Absolutely. So, uh, to start the conversation, let's just go ahead and, and dive into your guys' backgrounds real quick, uh, and then go up to, uh, where you guys are today currently. So I'll let, uh, Josh, if you want to start on this and then we'll, I uh, will kick it over and go from there. Sure. 
Yeah, um, I, I'm from Corbin, Kentucky, which is um, southeast Kentucky. Kentucky, technically. Um, some people in eastern Kentucky probably uh, don't view Corbin as southeast Kentucky. They probably don't um, see us as far enough east, but um, I would say I'm from southeast Kentucky. I'm proud of that. Um, I uh, So I went to high school at Corbin High School, um, graduated um, there in 2011, and then went to um, eastern Kentucky University. Um, the, the plan from uh, graduation, gradu- graduating high school was to um, get into the medical field. I wanted to, um, I experimented with uh, nursing. I wanted to go to nursing school, wanted to uh, eventually be a nurse anesthetist. Um, so put people to sleep all the time. And I thought that was kind of cool. Um, and then, uh, I, I, then I, you know, I took a semester of, of classes in the nursing hallway and I was like, I don't, I don't know if this is for me. Um, so <laughs> staying in the medical field, I, I decided I wanted to pursue athletic training, physical therapy route. Um, turns out physical therapy is a um, really competitive uh, graduate program to get into in the state of Kentucky. So uh, me not being the most competitive student, uh, decided that was probably not for me. Uh, so I ended up getting just a general studies degree. Uh, to get out on time, graduated uh, by the grace of God uh, in four years. Uh, no, no victory laps for me. Um, so, yeah, I graduated in 2015 uh, from Eastern Kentucky University. Um, got married the summer after I graduated. So 2015, I got married. Um, it's time to find a career. Um, and so I went into sales, uh, selling office supplies, copiers, printers, um, that kind of stuff. Um, quickly moved on, got into the insurance world. Uh, where I sold commercial insurance for a local agency in London, Kentucky, um, where I got to know a lot of business owners across um, the state. Um, and that that benefited me um, tremendously, um, just being in and out of business all the time, talking to entrepreneurs, business owners, um, decision makers. Um, uh, that, I guess, groomed me to become comfortable with, with conversations around business and, and how I can help them. Now, not every business owner wants to talk about insurance. Um, actually, that's one of the last things we want to talk about, so it's not very exciting um, until they need it, right? They don't want to talk about insurance until they need it. Um, and so, like, for me, um, I didn't feel like I was fulfilling a purpose um, necessarily. Um, I, I was going in and out of selling something that not everybody really wanted, and that wasn't really exciting. So... Um, I wanted to, I knew at that point, um, I kind of knew all along after I graduated college that, um, I wanted to do something different. I wasn't sure what that was. Um, but for me, um, as I was, you know, selling insurance, I was kind of thinking like, man, I can, I could become a business owner too. Like these guys that are, um, that I'm selling to, I, I can do what they do. And I think that's exciting. Like they're, you know, working for themselves. They're, they're doing their thing. They're hustling and and all that. Um, and so like that thought process there led me into exploring more passive income options. Uh, what options are there out on the internet to make a living? Um, and kind of landed a little, you know, in, in the digital marketing space. Um, and that's along in that timeline is when I met Kevin. Um, and I'll let Kevin share his story, how he got to Corbin. But um, so yeah, that's, that's kind of how we birthed the holler um, is through that, through me and Kevin meeting in that time frame of me kind of deciding, you know, may, maybe um, owning my own business would be exciting and something that would fulfill a purpose for me. Um, so I'll let, I'll let Kevin kind of dive into a little bit of his background and then we can kind of connect the dots, you know, uh, after that. Perfect. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, so I was actually raised in between Dayton and Cincinnati, Ohio. And uh, my grandparents, uh, my family's story is the old hillbilly highway story. Coal mines shut down. They travel north as far as a tank of gas will get them to manufacturing jobs. And so my parents and myself were raised there. Um, Came back down here for college, uh, University of the Cumberlands. Met my wife, who is from uh, southeast Kentucky. Um, We traveled up to Lexington um, after undergrad to uh, her pursuing her dental career. She's a pediatric dentist. And then um, I ended up getting a Ph.D. in educational leadership. So background in psychology, counseling psychology, uh, worked at a psych hospital, got hit in the face way too many times by people that got paid more than me, um, (laughs) which was amazing, and uh, decided that psychology was just not for me. And so switched over to education leadership and started looking at the system of education, of higher education as a business model. 
and um, ended up with a College of Education at the University of Kentucky as a director of recruiting, retention, and data analytics. Um, through that, uh, got some side gigs running conferences in Iowa, um, ended up running a, a very large conference up there. And running that conference meant I needed to figure out on YouTube how to uh, build a website, how to do marketing so that more people would come, how to figure out logistics, like how do you get 1,200 people on name tag in less than an hour and uh, get them in a seat um, and work with people, uh, all kinds of things, right, which now translates into digital marketing. So if you can run an event at a large volume, um, you can do well in the marketing field. And so uh, we moved back down here to my wife's hometown, and it's always been her mission to come back and serve Southeast Kentucky specifically with dental and oral health education. And uh, so I followed her. Of course, she's beautiful. She's smarter than I am. Um, so, you know, why not? And uh, when I moved down here, that meant that I went from being an admin at the University of Kentucky uh, in a professor role, um, teaching, loving life, making a great salary to moving down here uh, where that infrastructure was not set up for that for my career field to transfer. And so went into the coffee shop because that's where Internet was. And if there's an Internet hiccup here, it's because, uh, you know, Internet's not great um, in eastern Kentucky. I had to come home, and so um, you know we we are paying for the best of the best, and it's still not anywhere comparable to your city infrastructure. So um, rural America is on a different level, and um, I knew that when we came back, but that was going to be the challenge, right, that we're facing. And so started working out of a coffee shop for the free internet and uh, the really expensive coffee. So I was paying for internet essentially, and uh, met Josh there at a Bible study. And he asked me what I was doing and told him I was printing off a million name tags and putting them in little plastic things. And uh, he jumped right on board, man. And he was he was a quick learn, quick study. And um, I thought, you know, I'll wear this guy out and he'll go away. But um, he never did. You know, he just picked up more and more, um, taught him how to build a website and didn't have to teach him a thing again. So, uh, you know, when it comes to memorizing our Internet uh, password, it's 18 digits long. Josh looks at it, memorizes it. He's like a beautiful mind, right? And so um, eventually it's like, man, something special about this guy. One thing led to another, started a company, um, but it was all about a mission. And then then it was, how do we decide on a platform to fulfill that mission? And uh, it combined into his background in sales, my background in marketing, um, our connections in the area to into this beautiful kind of digital marketing platform that we can really have an opportunity to, to bring hope and opportunity back into Appalachia through digital marketing. So I love that. So we got on a call with you guys <clears throat> before we got on this podcast and we figured out that our missions are pretty, pretty aligned. You know, we just approach it in different ways. So talk about, you know, your all's mission. Yeah, I'll, I'll start. Um, you can add color to it, Kevin, as you see, but, <clears throat> um, so yeah, our mission, as Kevin mentioned, is, is to bring hope and opportunity to Appalachia. Um, and we do that through, you know, various ways. Um, one of them, um, is, by the nature of being a marketing company, we can we can come alongside business owners um, and help them rejuvenate their company um, and and trans um, I guess transform the way they view um, getting business or growing their business from door to door stuff or brick and mortar um, sales or trying to pick up you know attention from a billboard or um, off the street attention um, from from that mindset to maybe we could do something digitally to grow our business as well. Um, so we fulfill that mission, um, you know, with business owners and um, by, by providing that service. Um, and then also, you know, by helping them grow their business, we're also providing opportunities for their local communities for, to, to hire. Um, so as they're growing their business, they're going to need to add people, right? And so that's, you know, that's, that's a couple different ways there. Um, we're partnering with local universities to um, – uh, to put on an internship so um, we have college students in and out of here all the time um, trying to train them you know, real world um, situations how to apply what they're learning in school um, in their business department or communications department or marketing department whatever they're studying um, how can they apply what they're learning there into a real world world scenario um, and what we've done though is um, you know it's being a startup company we're only four years old um, but we have a team of, of eight of us, not, now nine of us, I, I guess, Kev, or uh, part-time. Um, but, you know, we've been able to do that 
by um, by using the colleges and universities to attract talent to either stay here, people that were born and raised here and went to school here, um, keeping that talent here uh, rather than going to a bigger city like Knoxville or Lexington or Louisville or Cincinnati or what, what have you. Um, that we, there's an opportunity here to do something that you're interested in, which is in the creative space. Um, but then also uh, not only keeping talent here, but also attracting people from other parts of the country that came to school here to play soccer or to play another sport or, or for whatever other reason ended up at University of Cumberland's down the road. Um, you know, so we have people from like we have a guy from Orlando, Florida that's here and said, you know what, these guys are I interned there. It makes sense for me to, you know, try to pursue a, a career here as well. And then and then what happens is they figure out, wow, this mission's really cool. We're helping people grow in businesses. We're growing or helping grow a business here. Um, and, and so they then stay from the mission and, and want to be, a, be attached to that um, and make a career out of it. And then, and then we, the next step after that of keeping them here is helping them find a, a spouse. And so like the, the next, the next <laughs> goal there is to get them married. And then, uh, and then they're never leaving. Right, Kevin? Like that, that's why you're back here. Uh, so, you know, that's, that's uh, kind of our series right there of, of how we hire them, get them to intern, get a hire them, um, and then get them married. So then they stay here. Um, but anyways, wow. so that's a couple different ways how we're fulfilling our mission. Um, and it's, it, it's like Kevin said, it's a beautiful marriage, um, of, of our mission to digital marketing because we are so versatile. Um, uh, like we can, we can launch our own brand, our own apparel company. We've done that. Uh, we could, we could launch our own sign company because we know how to market, because we know how to attract business, you know, online. Um, and, and so it's, it's a beautiful marriage because, you know, we're providing jobs in our company, but also helping other businesses grow and then also hire for themselves as well. So in any, any color yeah. there, Kevin, you what, can add to that, but no, as well said, great job. What, uh, what kind of businesses are you guys working with? What are, give us an idea of kind of, uh, the typical business that you're working with. Go ahead. Kevin. Yeah. So, um, uh, the first big thing we did is get involved in the community, right? Your chamber of commerce, your uh, rotary club, things like that. You get, you get your face out there. You start to actually fulfill your mission just by helping other people fulfill their mission. And it, the business starts to come to you, right? So a lot of our business is not something that we went door knocking for. And so what that's resulted in is, um, a lot of higher end customers that, that see the value in what we're doing because underneath psychologically, we're all attached to, through mission, um, you know, everyone can develop a skill set. Uh, you can learn anything you want on YouTube now. Um, you know, you can go get some some certificate that maybe is worth double the amount in terms of payout over a lifetime uh, than a college degree. And so, when you attract people based on your personality and, and your service and your your love and compassion towards others, um, what it results in is, is stronger relationships. And those relationships that we have, um, which just so happen to be business partnerships or clients of ours. Um, a lot of them are in healthcare and again, going back to the mission, you know, um, that kind of makes sense. The, you know, anything from restaurants to, um, gosh, um, insurance, insurance is difficult because of the laws on what you can do digitally with them and not, um, it's, it's kind of all over the place. We're not really industry specific, which is really cool. We work with a lot of nonprofits, uh, Kentucky or Organ Donors Association. We work with beverage companies, AL8. Um, we're just doing a lot of neat things all around. And it's that's what's exciting to us. We don't wake up and say, today's healthcare day. You know, Today we wake up and say, you know, whose mission do we get to be a part of today? And that's what, that's what excites us. It's when we lose track of that that yeah, that's it's a, difficult. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a, I like that perspective. It's very, very cool. Um, and, you know, whenever you think of kind of creativity and a, and a digital marketing agency. You don't typically think of Appalachia or Eastern Kentucky. Are there many other companies or agencies uh, in your guys' area that are doing something similar to what you guys are doing? Or what does the competitive landscape look like for you guys? This is this is really cool. And I'll let Josh chime in too. But, um, you know, the world the world says, like, anytime you go take an online course, right, what it, what you're told is is niche down. That riches are in the niches, right? And so, so many people are, are niching down and saying, hey, we only do social media for restaurant businesses. And sure, they become really good at it, but what it ends up being is copy and paste. And so, when you're in a small town or a small region like us, right, like Lexington, where you guys are sitting right now, is bigger than probably four or five counties wide. So somebody starts a digital marketing company, you know, as a, a quote unquote competitor, 
um, in this region and, and everybody knows everybody, right? And so you, you start to see the copy and paste mentality because they've niched down to social media marketing for a restaurant or for whatever. Even when they stretch across industries, they're not uniquely helping each industry. They're just copying and pasting what, what they're doing um, because one time it was effective for them. And so whatever, they inflate their stats and sell it. So I don't look at it as we have competitors. What I see is that there's a lot of people around us who have tried to niche down um, and they wear themselves out because the analytics aren't coming back um, as supportive and the clients get rid of them. And so we intentionally keep a broad focus on our services because to us, working on your Google My Business, a great uh, storytelling video, um, a website with landing pages that, that have a call to action that sends them to this email marketing and the email marketing platform, it's all interconnected. There's nothing that's just soloed. There's no silver bullet to uh, running a business long term, right? To scale a business and to grow a business and to have an ongoing relationship has to be multifaceted in some capacity. So in that in that light, I would say that the competitive landscape of what we do and who we play ball against is kind of non-existent. And that's not that's not talking down about anyone else that's doing anything in this area. It's just that um, we're doing it on a different level and, and we're getting up early and staying up late on a different level. So... Yeah, and uh, let's kind of transition into Appalachia as well. So uh, what we talked about on that phone call was this this really cool content series that you guys are doing called Exploring Appalachia. Uh, and that's something that we've both kind of been talking about is highlighting the tourism and the great things that are available to do in Eastern Kentucky and Appalachia uh, and, and the surrounding areas. So uh, let's start off. Tell us a little bit about you know what you love about this region. I'm sure we could go down kind of a laundry list of things, but uh, talk about, you know, what it is that, that draws you to Appalachia in the first place. Yeah, we always say um, what makes this this area special are the people that live here. Um, it, it's, it's definitely a culture thing um, that, you know, once you're a part of it, it, it's like, it becomes like a family and, and you want to, you know, you want to help each other out. Um, and, and that's when, that's when Appalachia is at its best, you know, I, I think, you know, for whenever sure. we, we come together and, and honestly, I mean, that's like, that should be for any community. I mean, like you could copy and paste our mission and use it for any community that someone lives in or use it for any part of the country that they may live in and, and want the same thing we do, which is to bring unity, to bring, uh, one, like everybody's kind of pushing to the same, you know, mission and, and, and all that. Um, but you know, what we love about Appalachia is that um, we always bounce back. I mean, like people always are, are counting us out, um, and but we always bounce back. Um, and, and, and I think that mentality is what makes the people here so special um, is because we're not, we're not, you can't count us out. Uh, we may not trust you at first, you know, like that, that's something that we struggle with. You know, like when I say we're, when, when we're not at our best, it's whenever we're like, we don't want outsiders in, right? Um, but whenever, you know, what we love about it is that the people here, you know, we're, we're always bouncing back. We're always going to get back up. Um, whenever, you know, the, the coal industry leaves, we're going to figure out another way to do that, uh, how, to, how to fulfill those jobs and, and, and how to creatively um, create new jobs. Um, and so what you're seeing is a lot of um, a lot of people are turning from the coal industry into trying to do something on their own, make something with their hands and sell it. Um, so you're seeing, uh, obviously, like there's a big artisan community in Appalachia, and and, and it's, it's not necessarily that we love the artisan community, although we do. It's 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 the it's the the culture that um, the kind of people that want to make something with their own hands that we love. Um, it's that hustle. It's that I'm going to get dirty. I'm going to get my hands dirty. I'm I'm going to work hard to provide for my family and to help my com community. Um, and so. That I mean, that encompasses a whole lot um, that we love about Appalachia. I mean, obviously, there, there's there's so much beauty here. Um, there's so much beauty here, and and, and things to appreciate um, in in that sense. But you know, the people are what make this this region so special. Um, and there's so much. There's so many stories to be told too um, that you know haven't been told or can't be told, um, or not that they can't, but they just haven't been told. That's pretty much as simply as we can put it. Um, and so we want to help people do that. Um, that's one, that's one and a whole another reason why we, we did digital marketing is because we can 
tell the stories of business owners, um, what they're doing, the good work that they're doing, how many people they're helping, and 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 how cool it is, you know, that they have a business in Appalachia. Whenever that's not the most popular thing to do in the world, um, in and how they've done it successfully. So, um, it that that's the best way I know to answer it um, is is the culture and people. Um, yeah, we hear that all the time. Pretty much any time we mm-hmm. ask that question, Kevin. What about what about you? Give you a chance to. to tell what you love about the region. Yeah, to, to me, it's the, the grit and the grind, right? Um, you know, we, we looked at coal as a natural resource, the, something God gave us to, to make power and energy out of, right? Um, that's shut down, be it political or, or whatever you want to say, um, environmental. You know, there's, there's science behind it. There's a whole lot of stuff behind it, right? But but the grit of, of the individuals that live here and the grind, um, man, some of the hardest working blue collar people you ever meet and that, and again it's nothing against anybody else it's just it's what we see you know but you you don't see the story in the mountains because the they can't run the internet line out there to tell the story yet you know and we're just now doing that it's 2021 and people are just now getting an internet in appalachia um they don't even know what amazon is i mean think about that you know like think about that Man. amazon's delivering with drones to people's doorsteps people in appalachia can't google something so so what's happened is they're they're just teaching themselves i mean you know we know of one guy who took apart a, a some coal mining equipment and made his own um uh, whatever he can cut up wood and um like a lathe and all kinds of stuff he just made it right <laughs> like he he welded metal and he doesn't have a welder like how is this possible right his grit and his grind is is what makes it so now we're seeing different companies like um here in corbin uh kentucky there's a there's a french company that came here because of the beech wood, right? Looking at the resources and they make popsicle sticks for blue bunny. Um, and, and, you know, we're still using our resources and, and it's because we're, we're wanting to stay here. We're not wanting to move to a city. Um, there's something special here and it's more than the resources. It's more than, um, you know, definitely more than money. I'll tell you that right now. Um, it's, it's meaning and it's tradition, it's hope. And, uh, there's future generations are going to see it because of the work we're all putting in today. So, Mm-hmm. Man, goosebumps over here. That was <laughs> awesome. Um, you, Josh, you had mentioned the beauty uh, in mm-hmm. the region, and so let's kind of transition towards tourism, which Explore Appalachia is really kind of pushing people towards. Talk about the the beautiful things about the region and what you want you know people to see as far as tourism. Goes. Yeah, man, uh, you, there's. I mean, obviously the mountains. You, know, you drive through. There's just not. A, there's not. A, many drives in the country probably none that are like you know driving through the mountains in appalachia um now it's not for everybody you know like just like anything but you could feel a little bit claustrophobic you're like you know winding in and out of hills and mountains and all that stuff and you're on narrow roads but you know just the the landscape itself is is beautiful um uh, but you know that what that lends itself to is a lot of opportunities for adventure tourism um and so Explore, you guys mentioned Explore Appalachia. I mean, that's our, you know, fairly new uh, initiative that we started back um, last fall um, that, you know, we, we want to bring people here to experience it. Um, we, we want people to experience the beauty. We want them to experience all the adventurous, you know, activities. Um, but we also know because what makes Appalachia special, which is that that grind, that the culture, the people here, um, you can't experience that if you're just you're reading someone else's blog post about this business owner in Appalachia or you're watching this you know story video about the business owner in Appalachia like you you not you're not going to fully appreciate Appalachia unless you come and experience it and so the the explore Appalachia um, initiative was was founded out of out of that vision is to get as many people here um, touring um, our our part of the country, which we think is so special, so that they can then not just have fun, not just have a good vacation, but then also start to learn a little bit more about us. Um, and and we're you know when we highlight so like Explore Appalachia, it's you know the medium we use to tell that story is on is through a vlog on YouTube, and so it's a first person experience that we're giving people of us experiencing communities 
in Appalachia, and we're allowing business owners, local people, tell their story um, of what they're doing and, and why it's cool, why it's special. You know, what, you know, what's the best? I mean, we're, we want to start doing like um, more food things, right? Like, what's the best apple pie in Appalachia, or you know, like some, some apple pie? Exactly. Like, we want to do more of that kind of stuff. Dave Portnoy. Um, <laughs> So that people can come and experience it for themselves, and they can see that it, oh, this is this is a real place. There's actually things going on here, and it's it's special, it's fun, um, and it's it's you know a place that you feel like family when you come. Um, so that's you know at the very foundation of Explore Appalachia. That that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to get people here, learn a little bit about it, and maybe even call it a home. You know, at the, at the end of the day, that's what makes maybe our initiative different than a lot of other tourism initiatives that are going on in the state and the region is that we want to graduate people, not not just get people here to visit, but we want to, how, how can we then convert those people into calling this place a home? Um, and then what that does for Appalachia is revitalizes our perspective. Um, we have outside people coming in, um, giving us new perspective of, of how to, you know, j- just how to, how to move forward, how to progress. Um, that's healthy. Um, that is a very healthy trait. And so we feel like we're doing our part um, with Explore Appalachia by, by doing that. And it's an absolute yeah, and talk about blast for yeah, us. Yeah, go ahead. Go Sorry ahead. to interrupt you, but I mean, it's, it's a blast. <laughs> I mean, you think of a digital marketing company. We got, we got nine, you know, sometimes 10 people there staring at a computer all day long. And so when we tell everybody, hey, load up, you know, we got ALA as a partner. Let's fill the cooler. And let's go to this place you guys have never been before, being from Orlando, Florida. You know, like being from here, you've never been there. And that's kind of amazing, too. Load up. Let's go. You know, and, and so then we're getting to hear the stories of like Middlesbrough, Kentucky, like this this thing from space came down and hit it. And there's a crater. And that thing from space is on the golf course. Right. Like some some founders started digging and found some iron ore, thought that that Middlesbrough was going to be like the next next Pittsburgh um, Pennsylvania and and people started coming from all over. So they built the biggest, widest roadways in downtown, huge intersection, like brothels started going up like crazy back in the day. Right. Just to find out that it was like, it was fake. It wasn't like real. Right. And so That's now they have this huge, beautiful infrastructure, right. <laughs> because of a meteor and this guy's accidental finding or, or like Pikeville, the, the, the mayor blew up a mountain, right. Made this cut through and his next, task was going to be to put a canopy over the town i have not heard crazy that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah yeah you're gonna have to elaborate on what that was yeah about. no i mean he so he a lot of flooding right um the yeah, infrastructure yeah, yeah. was difficult so back in like the 60s i think it wasn't too long ago right um he said we're gonna we're gonna blow all this up reroute the river north to south instead of east to west and we're going to make pikeville's like commerce area kind of like a horseshoe right a cut through is what they're calling it and um, so it's the only river, uh, si- like this side of the Mississippi, you know, I think the Mississippi does this too, but that goes north and south because they rerouted it. They had to. And um, because of this cut through, what it was is it, it's like they dug out in the middle of two mountains. And so his goal, his next big lofty dream was to put a canopy over like from one mountain to the other to stretch over the town to create a, a perfect utopian like weather system um, and had all kinds of ideas. Right. I don't know what happened to him or if he got voted out or, or something happened health wise, but that was the next thing that Pikeville, Kentucky was going to do. Like, who would have thought, you know, I don't know the ingenuity, the grit and the grind. It's crazy. It's awesome. Oh, he, com- he accomplished half of that. And for those that haven't been to Pikeville and seen that cut through, it is like a engineering marvel. Yeah. And I, I, there's like this big observatory too. I, yep. I've read it before. I can't remember a lot of the details, but I mean, it's like a lot of, like it was, I think the biggest earth moving project besides the Panama Canal or maybe even bigger than the Panama Canal. Since the Panama Canal. If I remember that correctly. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah, So that's like happening. Check out episode three of Explore (laughs) Appalachia. We we highlight that, that whole, you know, we highlight Pikeville. Okay, cool. It's our first episode. We're going to go back to Pikeville. Um, We did, we went there during the winter, so we couldn't do a whole lot of outdoor stuff because it was freezing cold, but. Uh, that was part one. We're going to go back and pike to Pikeville this summer um, to to do another more adventurous side of Pikeville and how you can experience that way. Awesome. Yeah. yeah touch real briefly on on the places that you've been and kind of like the videos mm-hmm. you you made while you're there, what you guys were doing, and then where you guys kind of hope to explore going into the future. Give us some ideas for for trips this summer. Yeah. Um, you know, so we've been to. Uh, Slade, Kentucky, which is like Red River, Red River Gorge area. I went to Harlan County. Um, 
went to Bell County, so went to Middlesboro, Pineville, Cumberland Gap, um, did a whole episode there. Uh, we've been to uh, Pikeville, which we just mentioned, um, and did a whole ep- episode on them. Um, so, like, we, we just started this in, in the fall, and so um, actually it was uh, October when we launched the first episode. So we've done three episodes total, I'm about to launch our fourth um, in the next week. Um, and so um, we, we've been to a lot of places already, but we plan to go back to Cumberland Gap um, pretty soon because there was a whole lot more there we wanted to do. Um, us, it was, you know, if we, if we would have known this was going to be as big as it's becoming Explore Appalachia, we probably would have timed our launch a little bit different, probably at a different time of year. Um, because what happened was we launched in fall, which is the best time in the world to go on a hike, right? In Appalachia, cause you got the fall leaves changing colors and it's, it's not too hot. It's not too cold. It's just a perfect time to go for a hike. So like that was a great time to, to have an episode. Um, but then we didn't think that it would take off like it did and and winter came right and so we didn't we couldn't do a whole lot of things advent, adventure wise outdoors um and so what we're, what we're trying to do now to catch up um on that is is do a lot more out, out outdoor stuff adventure stuff um here in this in the spring and summer so we're going to cumberland gap to, to highlight more of what they have to do outside like they have kayaking stuff they have horse more horseback riding um, they have UTV rides, all that stuff. Um, obviously, um, being in the in the Cumberland Gap, you have all kinds of hiking stuff. Um, you have the Pinnacle, which you can stand in Tennessee, Kentucky, and Virginia, all in the same spot, right? So you'd be three states at once, which is kind of cool, um, and that's in that area. Um, so we're doing that. We're going to go uh, – help me here, Kevin. We're going to go back to Pikeville, which I already mentioned. We're going to go to Letcher mm-hmm. County. Um, there's one other one we have another plan on. Uh, or playing on go to, but it's slipping my mind right now. But there's a lot. There's a lot that um, we just. There's a lot that we've identified, right? So, so one thing that um, we're definitely going to do is the music highway, and that's uh, oh, yeah, that, you know that a, a lot of your your current and kind of older um, stars in, in country music specifically, um, but also other genres. Um, it's neat. You can kind of you just make your own map, right? And you can wind around and see where the Judds grew up and Chris Stapleton over here to Tyler Childers and um, just so many, so many people um, can be on this one road. So we're going to do a whole episode on the Music Highway in Eastern Kentucky. And that's going to be, I'm pumped about that. Um, Mm -hmm. We have a a signed guitar from an unknown person uh, right now in our closet. Pretty pumped to give that away. Eventually, Un- um, unnamed. It is known. unnamed. Yeah, unnamed. We know. We know. Yeah. <laughs> um, but man, we're getting some traction, and and uh, like Josh said, it's growing quicker than we expected. Um, which means we're not, not. You know, typically you play catch up when something grows too fast. But we know from experience and watching others and and being mentored that when you try and play catch up with something that's growing too fast, you'll lose it. Um, it'll get away from you. So when you let it run its own course. And you're along for the ride, and it's fun, and it, it can go wherever it wants, and we just follow it. So uh, we have a forum open where people can tell us when they want us to come to them, and uh, people are pinging that left and right. So it's exciting. You know, we, we always want to give attention to our partners, um, attention to diversity, um, attention to growth in areas, um, opportunities. You know, CSX put their railway all throughout eastern Kentucky, and so it goes around and hits all these coal mines, and then it it dead ends in Corbin. That's, you know, Corbin was made because of the railway and um, it dead ends there. And then Corbin is where it starts going north and south. And so when they shut the coal mines down, a lot of the CSX railway shut down, but that's still our infrastructure, right? So when you follow the infrastructure, you know, just pull up Eastern Kentucky railway map and you'll probably see some, some areas that we're going to hit. So. Hmm. That's cool insight. Now you mentioned partners, talk about your partners and, and how they've helped, you know, SOAR, uh, is is one that you've mentioned to us in the past, and you already mentioned on this this podcast L eight. So talk about your partners and what what they've done to help. Yeah, Soar Soar is the, one of the um, is kind of our idea tank, I guess you would say. We have a really close relationship with them, and and things uh, traditionally have always been really good with them, and so um, and still are. Um, the that's where this was all worked out of was hey, we're having a Soar summit, but this year it's going to be digital. Um, you know, COVID and all that. And so what can we do that's something special? And they started just throwing some ideas against the wall. And the one that stuck with us is 
what if we made this video about tourism, adventure tourism, Eastern Kentucky, and we launched it at the SOAR Summit to try and get all these business owners excited about the, the possibilities and potential. And um, it took us about a week, maybe two, to really kind of bat it around, think through it from a business opportunity, from a mission opportunity. And um, man, that it, it, it's like the cream rises to the top, man. That, that rose right to the top. And we said, this, this is what we need to be involved in. This is what we need to do. And so, um, so we asked them, can we have creative direction on it? Um, you guys are super cool, um, but you're also a nonprofit, you know, with, with different things going on. And um, can we have creative direction run with it? And they said, yeah. And we said, okay, can you connect us with AL8? And uh, so they sent this cold email and man, AL8 got really excited about it. Um, and since then, we're getting more and more people excited about it, which is which is neat. So, Josh, am I missing something there? I don't want to tell too much, but I don't want to tell too no, little either. So, yeah, I mean, those are our two main partners right now, um, and we're working on on several more. We're going to launch this spring. Um, we just haven't finalized all that, so we can't talk about it. But um, yeah, th- I think the only thing I would add is is um, soar. Um, you know, Josh Ball and, and Colby. Uh, which you guys did an interview with Colby a few weeks back. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, these guys, Tal Jones is another really close guy in the SOAR group that we, we, we use and, um, and we talk to, bounce ideas off of. Those guys, man, I, there's, no, there's no better um, connector in, in Appalachia than SOAR and their organization. They, they, they have done it right as far as building relationships, um, making Appalachia about Appalachia, um, utilizing the services and the, and the products here that are sold in Appalachia to benefit each other. Um, and so there's no better connector um, in Appalachia than SOAR. Um, so, you know, outside of what all, all that Kevin said, that, that's, that is, um, their organization is really, um, is really good at connecting people together and, and connecting people that are like-minded. You know, we want to talk to people, we want to, because we want to grow, we want to talk to people that want to grow um, because we want to make a difference. We want to talk to people that want to make a difference as well. And so they, they really help us do that. Um, and that's, and that's how L8 came on board um, is they, they connected us to L8. We pitched our idea and, and our mission and, and, and that's, you know, I don't, I don't know if they've ever had this thought or idea, but it was like, it was like we came out of nowhere and they got excited about it. And like we were like an answered prayer almost in a lot of ways by the way they reacted. And um, and so they've they have been awesome. L eight's been awesome. They've been great support, um, helping us, you know, get the word out. You know, that's that's the biggest thing is you know it, we've we've said from day one, explore Appalachia is, is is to is to bring attention to Appalachia at the very foundation. That's what that's what we want to do is bring attention, bring um, energy to Appalachia. Um, and, and L8 is helping us do just that. I mean, with their, you know, nationwide influence, uh, we've been able to reach people across the country at a really quick rate, which is really, which has really been cool. And we do have a couple other, um, things that we did sign them. So I, I think it's okay to talk about them, but Kentucky Organ Donors Association just came on and, uh, you know, the biggest mm-hmm. problem they face in Eastern Kentucky is an education barrier. Um, people think that, you know, given a life or death situation, the doctor is going to say, well, go ahead and kill them off so we can harvest their organs. And that's that's not true at all. Right. And so as soon as we help them to bring that education to eastern Kentucky and break that barrier down, um, you know, people are like, oh, well, well yeah, well, why wouldn't I help people? Um, so that's kind of going back to to helping, um, you know, others in a weird way uh, in a little bit, but um, obvi- in a kind of obvious way, too. Right. Um, and there's a lot more that we can talk about there as to why, you know, men in Eastern Kentucky do not sign up to be an organ donor. Um, and then the other one is Double Quick. And Double Quick has uh, 42 um, shop locations throughout Eastern Kentucky um, that you may drive by if you don't know anything about them and look at them as a gas station. But as soon as you go in and experience Double Quick um, with a full kitchen in the back, hot and fresh items up front, um, you know, you realize that they're a relational crowd um, involved in each community for a purpose of pursuing that community and their relationships. So we're doing something really big with them this summer. And, uh, man, I couldn't be more excited about that project. Um, that's going to be exciting for this whole region. And, and you'll see soon why. So That's awesome. That's awesome that you guys have got those, uh, the support of those partners. I'm, you know, that's important as you're trying to pull together anything like what you guys are doing with uh, bringing it back to the original mission of providing hope and uplifting Appalachia. You know, it's important to be pulling together all sorts of different partners to make that happen uh, and kind of bringing it back to, to that overall mission and the future of this region. 
Uh, what are some some things in your guys' eyes uh, that you see holding Appalachia back? Like, what are some things that that need to be addressed in this region to get us, you know, to that kind of next level in terms of our economy uh, and just the region yeah. as a whole? Yeah, you had mentioned internet, um, and, that, and that's one that we've talked about one. a lot on here. And I think you, the way that you said that earlier in this episode related to people don't even know what Amazon is, mm -hmm. is just so powerful. Um, and so I think you nailed that one on the head. So what else other than internet? Because Colby did a great job, you know, talking about internet too. Mm -hmm. But what are some other things you guys are seeing? Yeah, I, we um, we have a lot of we have a lot of catchphrases or slogans we use around here. And so you've probably heard that a lot during, across the episode. But a, another thing we we say um, within the holler um, is that we want to rebrand Appalachia from the inside out. Um, and so we we know that um not that not that we have all these problems but we we definitely need to think about it what can we do differently and i think one one problem that um appalachia and the, and the people here can you know like one problem they can have or um would be that they're they're a little bit uh they don't trust as easily um as, as some others they're not as welcoming to outsiders right as as others because we've been burned before you know we've been promised the world and and then and then those companies leave right um and and it, it makes sense but at the same time in, in order for us to move forward we have to we have to change that mindset um and this is kind of like a charge to the people in appalachia and, and the business owners here is like how can we get people to relocate to appalachia families not not necessarily we don't we're not people are working on bringing businesses here and and call them home but how can we get families to come here and be a part of the community um and and welcome them right and and how can because that's just going to you know revitalize our perspective of things and, and how to solve problems um so that that's that's one problem that you know that we can focus internally uh, like we need to focus internally. What can we do different? Um, and because we, we should always be looking at opportunities to have a conversation to think about something that we maybe not have thought about in that way before. Um, and and that, you know, that's that's one way I'd, I'd answer that question. Um, Kevin, what do you think? Yeah, I think um, you know a lot of our opportunities that we have to 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 do what we're trying to do is is within ourselves. You know, we we talk an awful lot about tourism about bringing people here, increasing, you know, um, businesses, things like that. But there's a lot of things we can do internally too. And I think a lot of the audience that's going to listen to this is, is people connected in some capacity to Appalachia. And so, um, you know, we live in a city that's, that's fighting. I mean, we've got lawsuits with our next door city, you know, and that's, it's not attractive. Um, we, we live in small communities where it, you know, you hear of a Tim Couch coming out of this small little bitty community as a quarterback and going to play in the UK and the NFL. And, and it's like, oh, I can do that. And so a, a mind of a parent and the mind of a child is completely focused in on, I'm going to be the best high school athlete in the whole world. And there's nothing else to this world. And that's all that matters. And, and what we do is we lose sight of others. We, we focus too much internally and, um, you know, and then, so you don't go to the NBA and it's like, oh man, what happened? You know? Um, well, there's, there's 8 million other people in the world trying to do the same thing. Right. Um, and I'm not, there's been a lot of great, great talent come out of the Hills because of that focus. Um, but at the same time, there's been a lot of people, uh, I just heard the other day, right down the road, first largest disability insurance provider in the nation. And that's because the coal mine shut down. So many people just turn inward and get depressed because of the lack of opportunity. So they file disability, they get it. And who's giving it to them? This guy down the road. This guy's making money hand over foot because of the amount of disability claims. Um, and it's just because we're losing opportunity. We're losing hope in this area. And I think when we start to look inwardly, we can start to change ourselves and then start to change our family, start to change our friends, our church, our community, our region, our nation. And, and that's where it's got to start is with ourselves. And so, you know, if you're listening to this, I think the biggest opportunity to make Appalachia better is to make yourself better. That happens through knowledge. That happens through investing in other people. happens through getting involved in your community. And, um, and from that, your business will grow. Your happiness will come. Your connections will, be, will thrive, right? And there's so much more that comes from investing in other people and investing in yourself. That's right. That's right. Love that. Now, we always try to end on a forward-looking statement on what we see the future being. 
Um, so I want to give each of you an opportunity on what you see the future of you know, either Corbin or you know, that whole region of uh, Eastern Kentucky being. What, what do you hope for, for the region? Yeah, but that's a that's a good question. Um, it's a, it's a it's really that is we really hard because um, we like asking it though. You know, it's important. Yeah, when about. you're in the weeds, man, like that's kind of what you think about all the time. You know, whenever you're in the thick of it, we're just kind of like always trying to solve problems and like being able to, a question like that takes you out of the weeds and think, okay, bigger picture, what are we trying to do here? Yeah, um, exactly. And so, like, I think not not to keep um, restating the same thing, um, but it, it really, I, I don't know. I, I need to wrap my head around this thought. Sorry, you're going to have to edit this out. I'll, I'll let you think. That's I'll let fine. you think. Yeah. You want to think? No, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Um, I think infrastructure is happening at a much larger level than than I can touch, right? You've got um, you've got Tesla, Elon Musk over here um, launching like 40 satellites at a time into space for Starlink. Now, why the government isn't talking or why the media isn't talking about Starlink and they're just talking about him sending people to International Space Station, I have no clue. But this guy's going to rock the infrastructure of internet whether you're in the middle of the Sahara Desert or in Appalachia like it does not matter it's a satellite that points down right and so unless you're living in a cave you're eventually going to have internet I think infrastructure is a bigger thing that we hope for but it's it's inevitable that someone's going to tackle that on our behalf um so kudos to Elon uh for for doing that I guess um I think what I want the future of Appalachia to look like what I want the future of of not just Corbin, I, I keep coupling Corbin in with Appalachia because uh, we just have a more of a regional mindset. But I want it to be the place that's not uh, known as a startup city, right? Like Austin, Texas or uh, Silicon Valley. Like people call Kentucky the Silicon Holler. And I, I think that's just like a self-branded thing. Like we're trying to do something like that. But to me, that's temporary. It's something that comes and goes, comes and goes. It's you know, you look at like the amount of startups that fail and it's it's a tremendous number, but you got to keep trying. Right. And but I, I want I strive for Appalachia to be a place of sustainability, a place of scalability that we bring people here and they stay here for generations. It's not just a stop along the way to New York or stop along the way to Ashland or, or Asheville. I mean, like or Ashland, who, who knows, you know, but I, I want it. And you look at Jonathan, man, what a great stinking example we got in Jonathan App Harvest. Golly, I mean, App Harvest is absolutely crushing it. And you're not going to pick up a, a multi-acre greenhouse and move it somewhere, right? Like, generations to come are going to move to Moorhead because it has sustainability. So I, I want more of that. I, I hope for more of that. Yeah. yeah. And I think we talked at the beginning um, of the episode about the people and the ingenuity. Um, I think as I was sitting here kind of reflecting on the question, um, I mean, back to like one of the problems is going to be probably one of our solutions in the future, right? Like we're, we're finally going to have internet broadband throughout the mountains eventually. Right. And so if you can unleash the ingenuity on, in, on the internet, right. If we can unleash Appalachia on the internet, finally, I think what you're going to see in the future is some of the most, um, we're going to, we're going to, we're going to come up with some of the most, the best solutions to problems that, that, um, that I think that we're having today. And I think because we're going to be able to finally connect our ingenuity to technology and be able to distribute that across the globe. Um, and so I, what I, what I think in the future, what I think it's going to be like a mini, uh, it could be like a mini Silicon Valley kind of tech place, you know, that we finally are unleashing our thoughts of, man, I'm competing, I'm competing with the community next to me right now. I have to comp comp compete against like, you know, my neighbor or whatever, just to provide for my family. But if we can, if we can finally have, you know, the, the full opportunity that everyone else in the world or the country has, right, um, then we can unleash that, that thought process. Um, and I look in the future to really for Appalachia to become, you know, a, a, an epicenter for ingenuity um, because I think we're finally going to get attention for that um, because of the Internet and because and, that's going to bring us more opportunities. And, and we want to well, be a part of that. that. And the way that we're a part a of that is, is by telling those stories. And that's, you know, like – I'm, I'm pinging Jonathan all the time and I hope you're listening, Jonathan, because like I want to tell that story right to the world. Like, um, you know, you look at uh, all tech. I mean, they, they make like some weird horse food or something like that. But they ho they host the equestrian games in Lexington, rebuild the infrastructure of the horse industry for Lexington. Right. The horse park in Georgetown. And and out of that, they launch Kentucky, Kentucky ale. They launch a beer out of that because the world is listening. The world is there. And now they have this worldwide 
alcohol company that's absolutely crushing it, right? Like that's stinking ingenuity. And, and we got so much of that to release. And I'm excited to tell that story. Mm. Yeah, that's, that's a great way to, to put the future is it's, it's like this pent up, you know, it's just, it's just pent up. You, know, yeah. you guys have so much grit, as you guys said, and so much ingenuity and you just need that opportunity and that opportunity is coming. That's, that's really, I love yep. that. I can't, I can't move on past this segment without giving a plug for the blog. I wrote a blog about this exact thing. Yeah. I was, I was watching what Elon was doing, launching these Starlink satellites. And I was like, how is nobody in this area realizing how big of an opportunity right? this is for <laughs> Eastern Kentucky and Appalachia? So I wrote a blog on it. I'm going to, I'm going to encourage anybody listening to this to go check it yeah, out. Uh, but after I did that, I went and actually applied for the beta program for like a bunch of different areas in Eastern Kentucky, so like Pikeville and Moorhead. Um, and just got an email the other day that I was, I was eligible to get a satellite. So I went and ordered one. So oh, wow. I'm excited for that to come in That's and like awesome, test man. out the actual <laughs> Starlink internet. Uh, hopefully it's as good as what everyone's hoping it is, but it sounds like the initial tests are really oh, uh, man. Dude, proven to be awesome. something special. Yeah. So, that's great. well guys, thank you so much for, for coming on and sharing all this stuff with us. We're really excited about what you guys are doing uh, and want to give you guys a chance to, to tell our audience where they can learn more about the Holler Creative and where they can find this Explore Appalachia content. Um, yeah, we are, I mean, we're kind of all over the place. Um, the, uh, the first place would be our website. You can kind of learn more about our services there and, and a little bit more about our team. I mean, what, what makes me and Kevin so special is our team. So please go, mm -hmm. go check out our team. Um, go follow them on, on, you know, all the social platforms or whatever, get to know them. Cause it really, I mean, the holler isn't the holler without the other, the other six, seven people that are here every day. Um, so go check out our website, the holler.com and you guys can get to know them a little better. Um, and so, and we're on, you know, every, you know, social platform, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, uh, we, that's, we spend a lot of our time LinkedIn. Um, we do more personal stuff on LinkedIn, me and Kevin do. Uh, so you guys, we had a viral Snapchat there. one time or not Snapchat, nice. TikTok, Tick, TikTok. A viral TikTok, TikTok one time. TikTok. Uh, <laughs> and then we got off. No, 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 no. <laughs> TikTok. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Anyways, we're, we're on all the social profiles there with, for the holler. Explore Appalachia, our website is exploringapp.com. Um, that's kind of confusing because the name of the brand is Explore Appalachia, but the, the web address is exploringapapp.com. Um, and you guys can check out all of our episodes there. Um, you can also, there's like itineraries of the communities we went to that you guys can, or people can see you know, where we ate, what places we visited, all that kind of stuff. And they'll, it'll even give you the contact information for the people to, you know, the business owners or, or organization, uh, people that run the organizations there. Um, you can connect with them and figure out, you know, plan your trip out there or whatever. Um, and we're, we launch all those episodes on YouTube. So please subscribe to our YouTube channel um, for Explore Appalachia. Um, that's, that's where you're going to get the, you'll be the first to know if you do that. Um, if you, please subscribe, hit the little notification thing, um, and all that <laughs> stuff. I'd, I'd be crazy. Not, I'd like, Natalie would kill me if I didn't say, uh, subscribe and, and hit her notification bell. But Heck yeah, <laughs> yeah, that, those are a few places. Um, any, anywhere else, Kev, I, we're about to launch our own podcast actually. Um, so it, look, yeah, look up. in the next, mm -hmm. um, we're not, we're not ready to really say the name and all that stuff yet. Cause we're still working out all those details, but, but if you follow the holler, um, on all those social platforms, you're going to see us launch a podcast as well, which is going to really, I mean, we'd love to have you guys on there, um, eventually and, and talk about, cause I think like you said earlier, we really do align in a lot of ways. Um, and I think we could bounce ideas off each other and learn from each other, learn from your audience and, and hopefully, um, you know, we yeah, I mean, love that because, you know, we encourage many more podcasts, mm -hmm. you know, to come to this region because it grows the whole market. You know, there's it's it's surprising how few you know people are starting podcasts to shed light on these things. And it's such a great marketing medium. It's such a great way to share. It's your amazing. Thoughts. Um, it just have conversations with people. I mean, it, it's yeah. it's pretty cool. Um, you got you were saying like you're the only one in Lexington or. Uh, what, what, what did you say? Well, I mean, when it comes to, you know, technology podcasts, okay. there's probably, you know, one or two in the whole state, um, that are doing a great job. I'd say two. Mm -hmm. Um, another one is, um, flyover future out of, out of Louisville. Mm -hmm. Um, but it, just in general, like there's probably four or five podcasts that I even know of in Kentucky. Mm -hmm. You know, there's gotta be more. If you go to LA, everybody and their brother has a Podcast, own podcast. You know? it's in, it's yeah. in our instagram Second. bio uh, podcast yeah, yeah. podcaster <laughs> exactly. or whatever uh, they might have four entrepreneur listeners podcast. Still, <laughs> yeah. You know? yeah it doesn't matter how many listeners you have you're putting your thoughts that's out right in the world man. and hope and over time you you aggregate more listeners so yeah. yep. anyways 
really appreciate you guys coming on. It's been it's been great. Well, thank you guys yeah. for having us. We really appreciate it. Yeah, keep up the good work, cool. guys. Um, keep telling the story uh, of Kentucky. I know you guys are focusing on Kentucky and, and business owners here. So, you know, um, you know, I urge you guys to, to keep keep telling the story and, and doing it well. Uh, appreciate appreciate that work. Um, and hopefully, we can work together here pretty soon and, and do some cool stuff. Yeah.